Money Movies is a 1978 release crime thriller directed by Bruce Beresford. It's based on a couple of true life robberies, one of a of an armoured truck, another of security services offices. And it's also based on a book of the same name written by a guy called Devon Minchin, who actually owned the security services company that was robbed. It focuses on a, on a, a similar type of company that runs armoured trucks, that run payroll back and forth across town. And obviously, you know, they have, they have loads of trucks coming in once a week with sort of roughly $20 million on all of them. The trucks are quite vulnerable to people that want to rob them, basically. And, you know, there's lots of of security involved and the drivers have to be have their wits about them and we see you know quite quite close to the start of the film one of the trucks is robbed because the, the driver isn't really paying enough attention to his surroundings so the actual offices they seem pretty secure there's lots of gates and doors and locks and security things in place there's always a risk that, that there might be an inside job and that's what this film focuses on you know a group of guys know all that you know that there's 20 million dollars coming in every week and they and they want a bit of that for themselves you know they're playing their long game they've been working there a long time you know they don't want to get caught they want to get away so they're taking their time to to make this plan but there's also some mob guys and they get wind that there might be a <clears throat> robbery taking place they obviously want to get in on that action as well and you've got a cop there as well who's clearly a bit little bit corrupt and likes taking bribes and nobody in this film is particularly squeaky clean let's say you know you've got these security people that want to want to rob their place of work dirty cops everywhere and mob people and yeah there's not many people in it that are, that are on the straight and narrow you know there's even a an insurance guy who's sort of working undercover so uh, you know nobody really trusts him but they don't really know why it's all it's sort of very um muscular manly film <laughs> where there's not many women and the women that are there don't get a lot to do <laughs> or say so it's lots of lots of our blokes kicking each other in the balls <laughs> <laughs> punching each other in the face it's quite uh you're right it's very uh, it, i mean it's a very hard hitting it's very violent actually mm. this film and, and actually i think it, it's actually quite notable for being quite an early film that features quite hard hitting quite extreme violence yeah. shotguns going off and you know people's chests blowing apart and <laughs> it's quite a documentary feel to this film it feels like those films like you know the french connection that had that real kind of documentary style feel to it and then i was thinking while i was watching it point break kind of came to my mind which is yep. also another heist film that feels quite documentary like the australians seem to be quite hard hitters actually in more ways than one they <laughs> <laughs> I often find that if you go back, you know, like 30, 40 years ago, I find, often find in some films, fight, fight scenes feel staged. But in yeah. Australian films, they always feel like a punch up in the pub. Yeah, they yeah. always feel quite like you can feel every punch. So I've seen this film before. I saw this film a few years ago. I think it's mentioned in the Ozploitation documentary. But it just feels like a lot of those kind of exploitation films of that era. You know, they all feel very kind of, you know, they just went out and they just made these films on, on not huge budgets. And uh, they didn't have, I think they kind of, you know, obviously rules were different in those days. Health and safety wasn't quite like it is nowadays. Uh, and they'd go out and they'd just kind of film stuff when they could. It was a big flop when it was released. A huge flop. Was it? They went to a screening. The filmmakers went to a screening, and like a screening, and three people turned up to it. So it was it was quite a flop. But then I read a review that suggested that maybe because it was quite ahead of its time, that's maybe why it was was not the success that it that it could have been. And I I can't I think I would agree with that. I, I think it does feel quite ahead of its time. Yeah, yeah. At times it, it almost feels like it's quite Scorsese like some of it. You know, there's <laughs> there's. There's great kind of attention to detail. It's very authentic. So I think what's kind of different with this film is, I mean, it's a heist film, but it's a heist film within. So you're 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 inside the money place. You're inside mm. the armored car world. You're not you're not with. Although obviously the the people, you know, the crooks work with this company. That obviously get, that that obviously puts you in the world of the people being the victims. 
uh, which I think makes it slightly different to films that are always about the, watching the bad guys going into these yeah, places. Yeah. So it kind of gives you a different perspective. And because of that, obviously, you are you're around money, you're around how these the inner workings of these places. And I, I felt there were quite a few things in there which reminded me of, say, Goodfellas or Casino. You know, I think mm. there's a scene, is there a scene in G- is it Casino or Goodfellas where there's lots of, like, money, lots of cash. I think it's Casino, isn't it? There's a scene in the kind of the cashier office in this film which felt quite like that so it was directed by bruce beresford who is i mean he made a lot of films in australia around this time well don's party is another one and breaking morant which is a war movie uh but on the, of course he then he went off to hollywood and he's he's quite famous for like driving miss daisy and mm. he's clearly a, a very good uh filmmaker you know he's had a very interesting career and uh, I think this, I think that's why this film is is really well done, and I I really enjoyed it. Did you? Yeah, no, I loved it. I thought it was really good. Yeah, yeah. I mean, like, uh, yeah, obviously it's very similar to things like Heat and The Town, and like you said, Point Break as well. So, you know, anyone that likes those, you know, I think would certainly certainly get a kick out of this, as long as you don't mind, you know, a little bit of casual sexism. <laughs> then it's fine. No, it was really well made, and you know, considering it's quite a low budget, they used that budget well, and it's, I mean, obviously there's not a lot of locations used, but no, it's really good, and the, the cast are great, and like, like we said, it's it's got some hard-hitting violence in there, and it's never, you know, it moves along at a really good pace, character development's really well done, uh, you know, you learn just, just, just enough about each character, you know, there's quite a few people you get introduced to at the start, but you know, just the right amount about all of them and, and you know, their motivations and what their role is and everything. That was really, yeah, well, well put together. No, I really enjoyed it. What I find with a lot of Australian films is they kind of, they're quite, a lot of the times they're, they're quite, uh, they deal with social commentary quite a lot like we do over here. And obviously this one, this film features, you know, it's like they talk about unions in there. There's a great uh, there's a great scene in there where they're, so at the very beginning of the film, you see an armoured truck that's attacked out in, away from the uh, station that they're from. They're on their lunch break and they mention that, you know, the reason it's attacked is because they're on their lunch break and the unions say if you're in your van for a certain amount of time, you have to be allowed a lunch break. So let's just stop them having lunch breaks and then they won't get attacked. <laughs> you sympathise with these guys, um, even the ones, you know, planning to to steal this money because you know you know it's a poor poorly paid job yeah. conditions you know probably aren't great they're not particularly appreciated and things like that and a lot of them you know a lot of them are sort of ex-cops and things like that yeah. some of them because they've just retired or they just don't want to do it anymore but others maybe because they've been kicked out of the force basically for, for, for uh, dodgy things but they still manage to get a job kiting around tens of thousands of dollars <laughs> so uh, but yeah there's a lot of reference to to you know that the fact that rejects you know cop uh, you know police rejects that are, that are employed and i think there's there's kind of a, a, a questions about that and why you know you can't hire younger people you know who, who aren't maybe as over the hill or more susceptible to to being robbed or, or more likely to try and rob the place themselves yeah, that's sort of brought up briefly. That's why I quite I like I, I think I like this film is you you it's very believable. <clears throat> it's got it's got that obviously extreme violence, but it, it's very believable and all of the characters are believable. And of course you're looking at all the different layers of management, which is quite interesting. Mm. And they're all like you said, they're all quite corrupt. <laughs> you're never quite sure who to trust, who's ruling who. They're all they're all in it for something and all of it's not very good. No. Yeah, no, I, I I agreed. I, I'm glad you liked it and really enjoyed it because it is it is very good and it's got a great cast. I mean, Brian Brown is an early role from Brian Brown. I mean, he's probably the most famous actor in this, I'd say. I mean, so his brother in this is played by Terence Donovan, who people will most know in in the UK because he was in Neighbours for a very long time. That's probably possibly his most famous uh, film. And then there's a few other notable faces: Charles or Charlie Bud Tingwell who did a lot of stuff over here, actually. He was, he's Australian, but he came over here in the 60s and then went back. I think he was in Neighbours as well. And there's also someone we've mentioned before, Terry Camilleri, who was in Incident at Raven's Gate, another Aussie film, and is Napoleon in Bill and Ted's Excellent Adventure. They do take the mick out of his, uh, his short stature, but he's, you know, he's just as hard as everyone else. <laughs> he's like this hired gun. I mean, he kind of... He's, yeah. he's at the beginning, so when the first... And I think that it's quite interesting that because uh, so the very first so that first hit on the armored van when those guys go back to their garage to kind of unload the money 
he then turns up and like shoots them all dead. Uh, yeah. And you realise that everyone is just at that point. It's like okay, everyone yeah. is being set up here. And you, you can't trust everyone, anyone no. at all. And so when you meet the next lot who are kind of it's going to uh, who is going to basically be an inside job, you kind of you kind of in the back of your head you're like, mm, are they safe? No, no one's safe in this movie. Something's going to go wrong at some point. You're never quite sure know when things are going to come. And I think it, I think it's edited really well. And, and like you say, it flows along really well. And you're not quite... It's not like every other heist movie that's out there, which is quite fun. I think it's quite an original film. And I think it has its own special something to it, which is which is different. And, and of course, it is very, very violent as well. Um, I, I also wanted to know... I, I really like the soundtrack in this film. I wasn't... Mm. I remember being quite um, taken by the soundtrack the first time I watched it. And this time I realised it was actually... It, it's, it's actually a famous piece of uh, classical music. Music for Strings, Percussion and Celesto by Bella Bartok. And that piece of music, or... Uh, not this bit from this film, but The Shining also used music from the same composition. So it's a very famous uh, score. And uh, I thought the the part that they used worked really well for this film. Yeah, it did, it's quite yeah. a short excerpt from that piece of music, but it just it really took the film along, which which I really enjoyed. I think this is a really good film. And uh, yeah. so we are we're still doing things on Amazon Prime, and that's where you can see this at the moment. Yep. Uh, so you know, if you can see it, then I recommend you you go and check it out. It's also apparently a um. Sorry, before you talk about any DVDs that are out there, it's also quite. I think uh, it, it can. Be, it became a bit of a cult film, especially when you're talking about locations. There's a scene in here where they film at a um, speedway track, which is the motorbikes. Oh, yeah, yeah. So that was filmed at a place called Rowley or Ro- or Rowley Park, and that closed a year after they filmed this. And I think a lot of Speedway fans made this film their own because of that. Uh, so kind of a historical thing in there. There's an Australian release from from Umbrella, which um, was out a couple of years ago. Yeah, about only DVD. It doesn't appear to be any Blu-rays anywhere. I mean, I think, you know, it is a, it's a great little cult, sort of undiscovered gem that deserves picking up and giving a decent release with some nice extras. And it, it's wor- definitely worth discovering if you like any sort of heist film definitely worth checking out and the last 20 minutes are you know really tense you know the, the tension is is ratcheted up pretty well yeah. yeah you don't you don't know how it's going to turn out there are a lot of australian films out there that are really good uh, that, that don't quite i think a few of them kind of be- came back into the into the into the pub well, maybe not the public eye but but for, for cult film fans when they released that exploitation documentary yeah yeah which mentioned quite a few of these films there's another one which you can also see on amazon prime called stir which is not made by bruce barris but does have brian brown in and that's set in a prison and i think it was either filmed like just before this one or just after very close together and a very very good prison film that uh, so that's also on amazon prime uh, and in fact, it was a kind of a toss up between that one or this one on on what we chose to do. But uh, I thought I'd go with this one because I just remembered it being so good. But yeah, I mean, you know, definitely uh, if you like these kind of heist films, if you like things like, you know, Point Break or French Connection or even Scorsese films, things like that, then then go and check this one out because it's, it's really good and uh, kind of ripe for rediscovery, I think. And that was Money Movers, and as always, if you enjoyed the video, let us know in the comments below. Hit the subscribe button there, and don't forget to push that bell for notifications. There's other videos to check out over here. Come and find us on Twitter, Facebook, and Instagram, and join us next week for another video.